touching anything in heaven and earth, it shall be done. That's what Jesus said. It's as simple as that. Do you see the devil comes in with all these other ideas? He brings in elemental witchcraft into the church, and people are falling for it, lock, stock, and barrel. So it's the idea of the four directions, or the four seasons, or the four holy days, or the four elements. Did you notice what I'm saying here? Here's the four gospels, here's the four elements. Notice the number. It's the same. Whereas this is already done, this you must do. Two kinds of religion in the world. Do. Done. Which one are you? Which one's your church? If your church or your pastor or your spiritual mentor or your facilitator or whoever they want to call him is constantly telling you, now let's do this. Now we have to do this. Now God has showed me that I think we should do this. Let's do. Performance. If you perform, God will bless. That's another gospel. One, two, three, four. Whereas this gospel over here says it's already done. Oh, do you need something? Just ask me. I'll give it to you. I mean, your earthly father, when you asked him for figs, he didn't give you scorpions. How much more? And your father is evil. How much more your heavenly father would give you good things? Do we, when did we stop believing the Bible and start believing that if we did this? And I'll tell you something. Most of the people, in fact, all the people who teach this, do religion, do gospel, perform this, perform that, are very arrogant. They love to brag about what they did in order to God, in order for God to release unto them what, whatever blessing they were wanting. This, let me show you what I did. I did this. I did that. See, that's the boasting that Paul warned us about. Not of works, lest any man should. Can I show you what I did? Here's what we did. And, and listen, I've been around, hanging around preachers all my life. They love to get to the big meetings and somebody, and just waiting for someone to ask them how their church is doing. Boy, let me tell you what. Let me tell you what we did. Let me tell you what we did. Boy, we started this and we started that. And boy, I mean, people started coming in and money started. I've been there. I've listened to all their talk. I know how they talk. I know how they do it. It's all about bragging and boasting and look at what we did. And then, but God has blessed us in that. So then, now this sounds real spiritual. Anyway, the elements. I want you to notice something. And, and back in Galatians chapter four, verse nine, you observe days, months, times, and years. You see that? You're observing. You're observing, you do it four times a year. You observe this, you do rituals here. Look at that. That's weak and beggarly elements. That is works-based salvation. It's another gospel, and that's what Paul was telling them. Now, I want to show you something. I want to show you how right this Bible is. That, I mean, this Bible has got it nailed. Exactly this kind of voodoo religion that people are practicing. I want you to, just the word elements in the King James Bible. Four times. Galatians chapter 4, you're in bondage under the elements. Galatians chapter 9, the weak and beggarly elements. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 10, that the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night in which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise and the elements shall melt away with great noise. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 12, uh, looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of God, where the heavens, being on fire, shall be dissolved and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Four times in the King James Bible. God's telling you that the elements of everybody's performance-based religion, number one, is weak and beggarly and is of this world, and number two, they're going away. They're not going to last. In fact, I'm going to show you, see here, earth, air, and fire, and water? I'm going to show you how these things are going to come back and get people one of these days. I'm going to show you that. God's going to use the elements as part of his wrath. Big stuff. Here is um, a Wiccan website on elemental magic. The little, the simplified teaching of what elemental magic and the elements is all about. Within each of the four elements are nature spirits. Get a hold of that one. That are the spiritual essence of that element. They are made up of etheric substance that is unique and specific to their particular element. They are living entities, oftentimes resembling humans in shape, but inhabiting a world of their own. The beings in that elemental kingdom are work primarily on the mental plane and are known as builders of form. Their specialty is translating thought forms into physical forms by transforming mental patterns into etheric and then physical patterns. Each of them is a specialist in creating some specific form 
whether it be an electron or interstellar space. Now, there is, I'm reading this and I'm just going, I know what this is. I, I've said, and you're probably listening to this going, didn't Joel Osteen say something like that? I believe, I believe him and Oprah was talking. I believe they, oh yeah, oh yeah. In Joel Osteen's book, Your Best Life Now, he basically was teaching you the very subtle, unbiblical characteristics of elemental magic that if you, if you believe, then those thoughts through your mouth are transformed into your reality. Witchcraft. It's what it is. Elemental magic. And the elements are that which t takes those things and, and builds them for you. Think of masons. They build a lot of stuff. And they're a great architect. Uh, but anyway, notice that in this website they said that these elements are spirits. Earth, air, fire, and water. Four different gospels. Let's look in Ephesians chapter 6. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. One, two, three, four. You see how right this Bible is? This Bible is describing for you the reality of their religion. Whereas they say, now the elements are just simply the nature spirit forces that are working together to help us build things in our lives and make us better. Our thoughts can be turned into reality by the four elements, those spiritual entities. Paul said they're devils. Devils, principalities, that's uh, in charge of areas of authority. Powers, things like witchcraft or things that hold power over people. Rulers of the darkness, keeping people blind to the gospel. Spiritual wickedness, all kinds of sin and addictions and things like that. That's what these devils are responsible for, and there's four groups of them. Number one, that does denote the spiritual realm. But here in this case, it's referring specifically to elemental magic, earth, air, fire, and water. And see, I, you and I both know that there are spirits that operate around us and do things that we cannot do. There are people who believe that they're performing magic that by telekinesis or um, and the telekinesis is the ability to move objects with your mind like, I'm going to move this guy. <gasps> Look, it worked. Sometimes it's trickery. Sometimes, sometimes the magic works. Do you know how it works? There's a devil standing there and nobody can see him and he's going, Ooh, ooh, and nobody can see him, and everybody's going, oh, oh, look, he's got magic. No, it's not, it's not bad. I'm just bringing the spirits, the elements together to work for me. You can do the same thing. Little kids like Mike Hoggard, when they're young, want to do witchcraft now because they see guys on TV doing it. God spared me. Boy, did he spare me. This idea... They are made up of etheric substance that is unique and specific to the particular element. Their specialty is translating thought forms into physical forms by transforming mental patterns into etheric and then physical patterns. In other words, you think they perform. They do. They do for you. They'll do the magic for you. You know what that's called in witchcraft? There's actually a, a book. There's actually a law in witchcraft called the Law of Attraction. And it basically says if you just think about this long enough and speak it, you can speak it into existence and it'll come to you. I remember, I grew up in the 70s, all the 70s. I, I used to get, as part of this little package at school, Dynamite Magazine. It came from Scholastic. If you, remember, if you grew up in this country, you remember that. They sell books in schools all the time. Big money-making deal. But I got a subscription to Dynamite Magazine one time. It was a magazine for young, uh, young teenagers, older kids, things like that. It actually had an article. I remember it to this day. They actually had an article in there about how to train and concentrate your mind to think on something to get what you wanted. And it said that if you just stare at someone long enough and just implant your thoughts into them, they'll turn around and look at you. I was in sixth grade. There was a girl preacher's daughter and I remember I remember vividly sitting there I, boy I wanted I wanted her to be my girlfriend so bad it never worked out so anyway I just stared at her one day and with that in my mind I'm going look at me look at me look at me after about 37 minutes she did I went oh, it worked oh, it worked God's 
been so good to me. That's the law of attraction. It's the idea that if you think it and imagine it, you can create it, and then the elements are going to go out and build it for you. Witchcraft. Conjuring things in the spiritual realm. There's, and it's big money. It is, witchcraft is big, big money because Harlot, the Mystery Babylon, does witchcraft. That's who she is. She doesn't do nothing for free. Okay? The secret uh, is the law of attraction. Rhonda Burns writes this book. It's, it's a best selling book. It's got videos attached to it. It's in Fortune 500 companies. There are men who are running America, there are men who are running the world. Who, are, who have been trained to be witches through the law of attraction. There are men and women standing behind pulpits practicing witchcraft on you. And it's working for them. Um, Dan Brown. He just wrote a new book, by the way. I got it, and I haven't... I just started reading it. Dan Brown in The Lost Symbol. They asked Dan Brown, they said, Dan... Um, you know, you wrote the Da Vinci Code, then it took like, I don't know, like 25, 30 years for you to write the next one. What took so long? He said, I would have had it done, but then uh, there was a concept that was being introduced to me called noetic science. And if you've read The Lost Symbol, you'll see that he spends quite a bit of time dealing with noetic science in this book. It's not like he was making it out to be some sort of fantasy thing. He spent so much time in this book, you know what he's doing? He's training people into believing. Noetic science basically is this, is that images change people's thoughts and people's thoughts create reality. That's elemental magic is what it is. It's, that's what the elements are. And they call it noetic science. They call it science, but it's really not. But this is science falsely so called. It is the idea of witchcraft and it, they think it's real enough that, that they're investing millions and millions and millions of dollars into researching noetic science in the idea that if one or a group or a large sum of people can think all the same thing at the same time, then it will create the reality. The harmonic convergence of the New Age movement comes to mind when I say this. Because it's the idea, and if, you, and if you've ever heard this idea, the idea that if we all just pray or believe or think the same thing at the same time, then, then God will do this. If, if you've ever heard that, if your pastor has said, you know, I believe that if we all get together and are as one person and we all pray the exact same thing, then God will do this thing. <whistles> you see, the Bible is very clear. One man, one man can pray. One man can believe. One man can ask God. You say, well, I don't know if I believe that. Elijah was a man of like passions as ourselves. And yet he asked God that it wouldn't rain until he actually said, I want it to rain again. And God listened to him. You see, Elijah wasn't, Saint Elijah. He wasn't that. Guys, he said it was a man of like passions like you and I. And yet he said, God, don't let it rain on these people. And for three and a half years, it never rained a drop. Two witnesses, book of Revelation, same thing. So I'm just telling you, one person can pray and make all the difference. But see, noetic science and...